If you've ever seen or heard anything about Shergold guitars before, you'll know that they take classic ideas and put their own twist on them. They've never been a brand that have just made carbon copies of every other guitar. And now they've done it again. In this video, we're gonna be checking out their brand new model. This is the Telstar. So if you've never heard of Shergold Guitars, the brand can be traced back to the late 60s. Their kind of heyday was the tail end of the 70s. They've been played by a lot of big players, including Mike Rutherford from Genesis, the guys in New Order, and a bunch of other bands from that era. Now, the original Shergolds are quite pricey these days if you can find them on the resale market, and there's not really that many of them around. I have been lucky enough to play one or two of the originals, but fast forward to 2015, and the original brand was bought by Barnes and Mullins, the guys who distributed the brand back in the early days. In 2017, the brand relaunched with Luthier Patrick James Eggle, helping redesign and remodel the entire range and basically relaunched the company to a new generation. With Patrick on board, they successfully relaunched the brand with the Masquerader and Provocateur models. Now you may have seen both of those models on this channel because for the last three years, I've been using Shergold guitars a lot and I've been waiting for the day that they brought something new. And today is that day. The Telstar is their brand new model, which as you can see, is kind of a hybrid between a few different guitars. And that's what makes this quite unique and quite interesting. So before we dig into what the specs of this thing are, I just wanna let you guys know, this is a sponsored video in a way. I'm not getting paid for this video, but Shergold have provided me with this guitar. Now, if you watched my unboxing video for this, or you've seen anything on social media about these guitars already, you'll know that I was the person who was in the official launch day videos for this guitar. So I went up to the Shergold factory and spent the day with them and we shot the videos which were their official release videos. Part of my terms for doing that was I wanted one of these in gold. So that's what this is. This was given to me by the guys at Shergold for my part in the original launch day videos. So you can consider this a sponsored video because I am working with Shergold to produce this content, but they're not paying me. All the thoughts and opinions as always are my own. All right, so the Telstar has the official model number ST14, if you're wondering about the model number. This is a color called Champagne Gold, and it's also available in pastel blue. Both colors look incredible in person. I've spent the day shooting videos with both colors, but for me, the gold was always gonna be the winner, but I do think the blue one looks great as well. So aesthetically, we have a T-style guitar. So it's kind of Telecaster-ish, but there's a slight offset shape to the body there. As you can see, the bottom end kind of curves out slightly. And there's a few other details that really make this not a Telecaster. So first of all, we've got a solid poplar body. Now, this is not a super light guitar. It weighs in at just under three and a half kilos. It's heavy enough that you have got something quite substantial, but it's not a backbreaker. I just did a two hour gig with this on the weekend and not once did I kind of feel the weight of the guitar as a problem at all. It felt really comfortable and really balanced when I was stood up. So as I said, we've got the champagne gold finish in a high gloss lacquer on this one. I think the gold is just really eye-catching and I particularly like this raised section in the middle. Now I've always loved Firebirds and particularly I went down a rabbit hole last year of really wanting a gold Firebird 
So when they showed me the original pictures of these at the tail end of last year, when we were planning the launch videos, this center block that's slightly raised just blew my mind because that is exactly what I wanted from a guitar. So Shirkle have kind of cured my itch now for the gold firebird with this thing. I think it's absolutely stunning that you've got that kind of firebird detail on top of a Telestar body. Then we have a solid maple neck. It's a 25 and a half inch scale. So right at home for all the Fender style players out there, this is exactly that kind of scale length that you'd expect. On top of that neck, we have a laurel fretboard with a 16 inch fretboard radius. So it's pretty flat. Shergold have, again, done their usual thing of having something that's got a vintage vibe with some modern sensibilities. So the flatter fretboard radius will appeal to more modern players, but obviously the overall aesthetic sits in that more vintage and retro vibe. So that laurel fretboard has hard nickel medium jumbo frets on the top with mother of pearl dot inlays. Got some small side dots as well and a synthetic bone nut at the top. Up at the headstock end, we've got a color matched headstock with a slightly different Shergold logo. On their previous offerings, they had the logo was kind of embedded as like an enamel crest, which you could actually take off if you wanted to, but it was actually a physical crest that was kind of an embedded in the headstock. Now they've just gone for a printed headstock with a color matched finish and some stripes there. And we've got some six in a line tuners. These are not branded ones. They're just Shergold's own, but they are pretty solid and pretty stable. I mean, like I said, I've used this on a gig already and I didn't have any tuning issues there whatsoever. They feel pretty good. The action on them feels quite nice. If you bought one of these and you really wanted to, you know, feel completely safe, you could always upgrade them to a set of locking tuners. But first impressions of these for the gigs I've done with it, they feel pretty good. Then we come down to the top of the body. So aside from the visuals, we've got a few cool things here. So this is a stop tail bridge. It's a string through body with six individual saddles. We have two page filter sonic humbuckers. So these are like your filter trump pickups you get on a Gretsch. Because these pickups are quite narrow, they pick up a smaller range of vibrations across the string. So what you get there is a more pronounced high end. So they're kind of like Filtron P90 kind of sounding pickups. They're really nice, really crisp in the top end. I actually found that I got a lot of kind of Telecaster and single coil kind of vibe from this when I was playing it, especially clean. So those are, again, very vintage voiced, but they do the job. They can handle quite a bit of gain as well. We've got a three-way selector switch. Down is the bridge pickup. Middle is both on and up is the neck. Then we have a single volume and a single tone down here. So we've got a couple of different quirks here of different guitars. So we've kind of got like the Gretsch thing going on with the pickups, the Firebird aesthetic with the raised bit, the Telecaster style control layout, and then the Les Paul style toggle switch. And I should mention it is a bolt-on as well with a recessed neck here like that. Very, very comfortable to get up at the top end. So spec wise, that's pretty much everything covered on this thing. Now what Shergold have done here is they've come in at a much lower price point. So when Shergold relaunched, the Masqueraders and the Provocateurs sat more in the 750 to 850 kind of price ballpark in the UK. What they've done with this series is they've come in much lower. So these actually retail at around about 380 pounds in the UK. So they're much, much more affordable, but what Shergold have done is they've not compromised on anything. So obviously the biggest thing that is different when it comes to these ones versus the original models of the relaunches, the original ones came with Seymour Duncans, and there was a lot of extra details like they had custom bridges designed and the strap buttons were hand milled, little things that kind of push up the cost of the guitar. Now what they've done here is they've kind of stripped it back to a more bare bones setup with their own kind of in-house brand with these page filter sonics and used more kind of normal woods like maple from the neck rather than the rosewood ones you had on some of the original relaunch models. But like I said, they've not compromised on the feel and quality of this thing. So even though this is pretty much half the price of what the first batch of relaunch models came out at, this is still every bit just as playable as those models. This is such a comfortable guitar. And like I said, my first impressions of this have been great. I've kind of known about these for a while pre-launch because I was involved with the video to launch the guitars. But ever since I first played one, I knew exactly what they were going for. And yeah, these are great out of the box. I mean, it's very comfortable. It came set up really well and it just sounds great. Even though it is a lower price than the other ones, it's every bit as playable. And 
you know, obviously, like I said, there's a few changes, like you're not getting branded pickups with this and you're not getting custom made hardware, but really that doesn't matter. What you're getting here is a great guitar for under 400 pounds that still has all of that kind of modern cross with retro magic that Shurgle just seemed to produce. I really like this thing. So we're going to plug it in now and hear some sounds. All right, so gear-wise, I've got the Telstar plugged into the Blackstar Studio 10 6L6. That's running completely clean. That is running via the Two Notes Torpedo Cap to X. And the overdrive you're going to hear in the video is coming from the Wayhuge STO overdrive. So I'm going to start with some clean tones first of all. Starting on the bridge pickup, I'm just going to work through all three pickup positions while playing clean. <laughs> So I really like those Filtertron style pickups because when you play clean picked or strummed stuff, especially in the middle position, you get this nice kind of chimey, gretchy sort of vibe. <laughs> Then, when you start to play kind of funky stuff and you dig in a bit harder, the pickups kind of go a little bit more Helicaster-esque. So I think there's a ton of really cool tones in this thing that extend beyond these being humbuckers, because they are actually humbuckers. And my initial thought with this guitar when I first kind of saw the the original kind of artist design and then I first played one of the prototypes was that it would lack the versatility that some of the other Shergolds have because my Masquerader has a Tele bridge pickup and two single coils, super versatile, and my Provocateur has a humbucker and a P90 with a coil split, again, incredibly versatile. So for me, being pinned down to just two humbuckers, I was a bit worried initially that it might not be that versatile, but when I played it, my God, are these things versatile. These pickups can do so much. So I'm going to kick on the gain, which is the way huge STO overdrive. And we're going to hear how the three pickup positions sound with some drive. <laughs> Thank you. 
So again, a ton of great gain sounds with this thing. Now, when we play this thing overdriven, these pickups aren't designed for your super saturated, high gain, heavy rock. They can handle a bit of gain, which I will show you by cranking the gain on the STO. We kind of go into more fuzzy, compressed, vintage style tones when we really push gain hard into this thing, because these pickups, you know, they're not active humbuckers that are designed for playing crushing metal stuff. They are vintage voice pickups with a really pronounced top end. So they're great if you want to capture your kind of blues, country, classic rock, even up to some hard rock stuff where you want to get a bit wacky and kind of have a guitar that's a bit characterful rather than a typical humbucker. This has you covered. So here's how this sounds with the STO gain on full. What you previously heard was the gain on half. <laughs> So I actually did the pickups in the wrong order there. I went bridge, neck, then middle, but you get the idea. It still gives you a very vintage -y style sound. Even though we're pushing quite a bit of gain into it there, it kind of retains that characterful vintage vibe. But yeah, for me, that's great. I love that sound anyway. I'm more of a low gain player, so that really sits well in my ballpark. So I love this thing. I mean, I've used this in a bunch of videos already. I've gigged it, I've taken it out for some shows and I've played it a lot since this one arrived. I'm a big fan of this guitar, but what do you guys think? I'd love to hear what some other thoughts and opinions are on the Shergold Telstar. Now, obviously, Shergold as a brand are one of those brands that people either love or hate because they have always done their own thing, and they've never really done anything by the book. They've never just done, you know, your carbon copy Les Paul, your carbon copy Stratocaster, and this is not a carbon copy Telecaster. It's something that you know, is their own vision of what that guitar should be. So I am a big fan of companies that kind of take a classic formula or a classic idea and kind of twist it to suit some new kind of creative venture. And I think with this, they've nailed it because it would be very easy for them to just come out with a tele clone that would be great, but it would just be another tele clone. So to do this kind of thing gives it a new character. And for me, that is really what Shergold as a brand is all about. They always kind of look for ways to not reinvent the wheel, but, you know, to kind of do their own thing with the wheel. They always want to do their own path and kind of create something that's a little bit interesting. And yeah, I think they've nailed it with this guitar. And when we're talking about the price of this thing, as I said, it's under £400 in the UK. This is insane value for money because what this plays like and feels like and, and sounds like is not a guitar that costs under £400. Now, I've played a lot of guitars that sit in that price range, and I've played a lot of guitars that are more expensive, and even just in their own catalogue, this easily competes with their more expensive models. So the fact that they've come in here with a guitar that's half the price of what they've already sold as a company, and not compromised any of that feel or kind of vibe of the instrument, kind of says a lot about the company. I'm a big fan of Shergold and I've got a great relationship with those guys and yeah, they've done it again. So let me know what you guys think. There's some links down below where you can check out the Telstar for yourself, either in this amazing champagne gold or the pastel blue, both look great. If you haven't seen the launch day videos, I'll link those down below as well. You can hear me playing a full track with the guitar, showing you a bunch of different tones like we've done in this video as well. That's over on their YouTube channel, but as I said, I'll put a link for that down below as well. Let me know what you think. While you're done, then leaving a comment. Don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button, and I'll see you guys very soon. Thanks for watching.